Hello everyone. I am Saurabh Laha, PhD student from Arts and Climate Science. I am doing my PhD under uh, Dr. Orgo Banerjee. My area of research is to understand the climate response of Himalayan glaciers as well as the glacier fed rivers. So today I shall briefly discuss the glacier, river and climate change over the Himalaya. Here I shall try to introduce a basic understanding of Himalayan glaciers as well as high mountain rivers. So here in the, in the first slide here I am showing one photo of a typical Himalayan gla uh, glacier. So this glacier name is Hamta Glacier. It is in Himachal Pradesh. Here you, you can see there is a steep mountain and at the beginning of the glacier from where the, gla the glacier starts. Okay, I should use the laser pointer. Yes. So this is the head wall and from, from which glacier is flowing along this direction. And also you, you can see the glacier, uh, this uh, glacier uh, surface is covered by the debris material, which mainly comes due to the erosion of this head, head wall. Okay. So uh, let's start with what is glacier? So glacier is basically a large mass of ice or snow on the la land uh, surface that moves uh, uh, down slope due to uh, gravity. So what are the conditions to form uh, a glacier? So first of all, the mean annual temperature at that place must be below or close to zero. Although also they, uh, there has to be a significant amount of uh, snow, uh, snowfall. The glacier mass, the glacier ice mass basically, originating from the accumulation of snow that does not melt entirely averaged over several years. Then the accumulated snow that compacts and recrystallizes over these several years and turns into glacier ice. Therefore, the glaciers generally found in high latitude, for example, Arctic, Antarctic, and high altitude, for example, Himalaya, depending on the snow, snowfall and temperature condition. The glaciers generally divided into two parts, two zones basically, you can see in this schematic, the, uh, the upper portion of the glacier, the snowfall is generally higher and the temperature are cooler. Therefore, the annual accumulation exceeds the ice loss by melting. This portion of this uh, gla glacier is called accumulation zone. In the, in the lower part is called ablation zone and here the annual melting exceeds the snow accumulation there. And this accumulation and ablation zone is se separated by a equilibrium line where annual accumulation is e equal to the annual ablation. And this position of this, the position of this equilibrium line is denoted by a elevation, which is called equilibrium line altitude or in short ELA. And this position of the ELA is determined by the local climate and the topography. As I said, the glacier existence of gla glaciers depending on temperature and snowfall, in that way, the glacier responds to the climate change. So for example, in a st steady climate, the glaciers remain st steady. In a wa warming cl climate, the glacier uh, retreat. Or in a co cooling cl climate, the glacier advances. And this is the animation that shows the typical movement of a glacier using a sa using satellite images. This image is made by Dr. Frank Paul. So this is uh, the name of the glacier is Baltoro gla Glacier. It is in Pakistan. This uh, glacier is flowing from your right direction to left uh, direction. Basically what he did, he extracted 17 different images of this gla glacier between 1992 to 2015 and make this, um, this animation. And th this animation, you can see the comp complexities related to, to the gla glacier flow. Now we'll uh, look at the typical view of an Himalayan glacier. So let me play this video. Yeah, you can have a look how the typical view of a Himalayan glacier. So this is a Sotopant glacier in Uttarakhand. 
here you can see this glacier is surrounded by the steep head wall and side wall and i took this video while doing uh, the field ex experiment there so here are some people who are who went to that glacier and we are doing the field measurement together so this is a actually yeah so this is actually the head wall of this satpant glacier so it is one of the tributary of that uh, gl uh, glacier and this glacier flowing along this direction yeah in this view it will be clear yeah along this direction the glacier is flowing okay so this is about the view of that uh, of a typical glacier now when we uh, sorry yes so when we went to the field we perform different kind of field experiment as uh, already seen that typical himalayan glacier can have a, la a layer of de debris on top of ice uh, uh, surface we do measure this debris thickness by de digging hole on the glacier surface up to the ice and we uh, me measure the debris thickness also we measure the how much ice is melting there by putting bamboo stake on the ice surface by dr drilling into the ice so when we put the stake we measure the height of the stake from the ice surface let's say it is h1 and then after 15 days we again go there and again we measure the height let's say h2 and then if we subtract the height h2 from h1 that will give us the point scale melt during the 15 days we do measure the same uh, for different location on the glacier to during whole summer season for example june to september we also install automatic weather station on the glacier to measure the meteorological parameter like air temperature precipitation incoming outgoing radiation wind speed etc which are required to do the energy balance at the glacier surface we also do measure the winter snowfall by putting drums at the beginning of the winter season then also at the at uh, glacier at the glacier ter ter terminus we also measure how much water is flowing out from the glacier okay and that contribute to the river run off so the, these are the measurement we do when we go go to the field. okay so so far we discussed some details of the glacier now we will see the glaciers over whole high mountain asia and its importance general feature etc okay so this is the high mountain asia has the largest cover of glacier outside polar region it's sometimes called the third pole okay so this first map is showing the present glacier volume which was aggregated on a 5 km cross 5 km grid size over high mountain asia the color scale is like more pink is high glacier volume or, and uh, light blue color is less uh, glacier volume so you can see in in the karakoram region has more glacier volume compared to the other region over the himalayas and this melt water from this gla uh, glacier feeds the ma uh, major asian rivers like the ganges bombaputra indus etc that is why this high mountain asia is called is also called the water tower of asia and this melt water from this glacier provides a valuable fresh water for drinking irrigation as well as the hydroelectric power station there okay and this uh, right hand side plot it is showing the fractional glacier melt contribution to the river runoff this red color of the pie, pie chart shows the fractional glacier melt compared to the other component exists that, that exists in the river runoff for example precipitation contribution here you, you you can see the central and the eastern himalayan region the glacier con melt contribution is less due to pre presence of indian summer monsoon it is mainly the precipitation phase and in the western or in the Kara karakoram region when the mo the monsoon is very weak there the significant fraction of the river runoff is controlled by the glacier melt so in in the western and and, uh, and the karakoram region the glacier melt the glacier melt water is much more in, in important for the river runoff okay so uh, <clears throat> i mean uh, 
here uh, we discuss the importance of the glacier so let's uh, look at the present and the future uh, state of glacier over high mountain asia so in the left hand side plot it is so th this this plot is showing the present mean ma mass balance of glacier over high mountain asia what we can see is here overall there is a ne negative mass balance except the regions from uh, karakoram pamir etc so overall this negative mass balance indicate the glaciers are losing more mass than it gets so the glacier ice storage is right now depleting although there is a special variability in the ma mass loss for example if you look at the figure somewhere this uh, somewhere this uh, circles are li light red and somewhere it is the the this dark red although also we we do see some mass gain over Karakoram and Pamir region, which is uh, mainly uh, driven by the different climate setting over there. I am not going to that, that detail, but anyway, now the next question will arise. If the if overall the glaciers are sinking, then what about the future of Himalayan glacier and the future of the river run of changes in the Himalayan river? So the right hand side plot, it is showing the overall glacier area loss by the end of the century, which this uh, area loss is uh, denoted by this dark gray color, where the background color is showing the temperature change by the end of the century. Here you, you can see most of the places, more than 50% of the glacier area will loss by the end of the century, except some region from Karakoram and Pamir. So, uh, the few future projection of this, uh, this kind of future projection of, over Himalaya always suffer from large uncertainties. For example, if you look at this uh, figure, where the glacier laws are plotted for different climatic scenarios, future climate scenarios, where the ma mass loss is varied from 30% to 80% by the end of the century. So this kind of uncertain, large uncertainty present in the future projection. There are several uh, reasons behind these huge uncertainties. For example, some of the processes related to the present glacial mass balance are not very well understood. Also, these uh, different climate, uh, climatic future projections have large uncertainties. Also, there is a serious lack of field observation to constrain the model parameters. So, all this leads to this huge uncertainties in the future prediction of Himalayan glaciers. So now uh, let's uh, look at the runoff response of, of a glacierized Himalayan basin in a warming climate. So this is a schematic of the runoff response. So let's start with a steady gla uh, glacier where the net mass balance is zero. I mean, whatever is gaining, it is losing. So this is this blue curve is the annual runoff and this red curve is the main se uh, uh, season runoff, okay? And here we assume this catchment, this catchment or this basin is basically gets the snow during the winter. Okay. Now, as the climate warms up, the glaciers start sinking. As a result, they start uh, releasing excess water that is stored within the gla glacier in form of ice. And there, at some point of time, uh, and it continues, this air temperature continues to rise. And they are, therefore, at some point, point of time, we, we see a peak, peak water, okay? And now if the temperature continues to rise again, the glaciers, to this ice storage itself de depleted and the runoff start decreasing. And when the gla glacier vanish or they uh, release a, or, or they re re reach to a, another steady state, the annual runoff gets back to its or original uh, value. So, so here the, that can happen only if the background precipitation remains the same. But the runoff, the the runoff seasonality will change. For example, you can see the melt season runoff it decreases due to the vanishes due to the vanishing glacier. So this is one of the characteristics of a glacierized catchment. And this peak water is typically is around 2015. Some of the in some uh, Central Himalayan river basin, although there are large uncertainty in, regarding this peak water timing. 
and this right hand side plot so here uh, i am showing the model da data of glacier runoff change by for indus basin and here you can see is around uh, 2030 there is a peak water and after that the runoff start decrease so this is one pre prediction from this kusan hawk 2018 nature paper okay so this is a so this is one of the correct characteristics of a glacierized basin. So this is uh, another characteristics of a glacierized basin. So this figure is, is again a glacier melt contribution to the river uh, runoff, and uh, this is a uh, so this figure was taken from a recent paper by uh, Professor Hamis Pichard. Uh, this left hand side figure. So it is shows the glacier melt contribution on an average year. The circles are the location of the dams or the water storage and the size of the circle denotes the size of the storage. So if you look at the darker color in each pie, pie chart, it is showing the percentage of glacier melt contribution. Now the same thing if you do, if you see in the right hand side figure, it is the same plot but during drought year where precipitation is very less. So in the dry summer month, the glacier melt contributes, the, the, the glacier melt contribution really goes up and that way the glacier provide or maintain the water water to the river discharge. So that way the glaze, it, it's called glacier buffers against the drought. So that means, so um, I mean, uh, due, during a drought, drought year, the river runoff will not go to zero, but due to presence of glacier melt water, it will maintain a certain level of water flow. So for example, if uh, the glacier vanishes, so this kind of effect will go out. So this is again the one of the characteristics of the glacierized basin. Okay. So as we all already seen that overall glaciers are uh, shrinking. Th this due to uh, and they are releasing extra melt water. These water from glacier melt are contributing to the sea level rise. So if you see the first plot, so this is the sea level rise, the recent sea level rise. And you, you can see the meltwater from glacier plays an important role there compared to the thermal expansion of seawater due to warming. In the left hand side plot, it, it is from one recent study, it shows the, uh, it, it, it shows the sea, sea level equivalent of total glacier mass loss. So although this uh, ice mass stored in the glaciers are very small compared to the bigger polar ice sheet uh, in Greenland and at Antarctica. But the response time of a glacier is pretty low. For example, it's few years compared to the ice sheet, which has a, a response time is around 1000 year scale. So due to the short, time, time, short uh, response time in coming years, in, in recent coming years, the meltwater from glacier became a significant contributor to the sea level rise compared to the ice sheet. Okay. So in a few of the previous slides, we discussed the present and future status of Himalayan glacier, its importance in the river runoff as well as the sea level rise. Now, the presence of uh, glaciers in a basin also create the, ha the hazards. For example, there was a, a recent uh, fl flash flood that uh, happened uh, due to ice avalanche from steep glacier at Chamoli district Uttarakhand and it uh, destroyed a nearby hydro uh, power station at Tapubun. In the so in this image is showing for example here you you, you can see the avalanche the, the movement of the avalanche that that uh, destroyed this dam. So here is uh, I have attached one video of this event. So this, so this is a flash, flash flood event uh, that I got from YouTube. Some local people have uh, uploaded this video and you can also have a look in the YouTube and you, you, you will find this uh, video. So you can see how dangerous this flash, flash, flash flood is coming. Okay. So this is what it happened on 7th February to 2021. Okay, you, you, you can see its uh, nature, I mean, how dangerous it is. Yeah, 
so and this kind of uh, so this so this is a very common uh, fl flustered thing this uh, hazards it can happen in a glacierized catchment for example if you remember there was a flash flood event again uh, at uh, kedarnath so it was not by the ice avalanche it it, it was so there, there is this several lakes in in front of the glacier so when uh, it 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 can ha ha happen if there is some bigger ice avalanche come and it, and and it breaks the uh, lakes and then there can be a flash flood so the so this kind of hazards can uh, is very frequent in a glacierized catchment and it it it, it can happen also for example if we talk about the ice avalanche when we go to the field uh, we can uh, every now and then we can see this uh, bigger ice avalanche is coming from either from head wall or from side wall okay so this is one of the avalanche video that i had captured during uh, one of the field ex experiments so um, so it was from again from this uh, so, uh, so, sotopant uh, glacier so here you, you you can see this avalanche so it is coming through this channel yeah so we were doing some field experiment nearby to this place and we, we ca i captured this video it was really scary and you can see how it's coming so it is again from this sotopant so sotopant glacier yeah the video is not very stable but anyway but you, you can at least see the event and this av av avalanche is come and it uh, contributes uh, this ice on the glacier surface okay and you can see how how it comes okay So, so far I have uh, discussed di different field measurement on glaciers as well as uh, di different aspect of uh, st studying glaciers, but there exists uh, some difficult, still uh, difficulties that exist in understanding the climate response of Himalayan glaciers as well as the glacier fed rivers. Here uh, I have listed few important points, for, a, for, a, for example, the variability of regional climate that drives the different cli climate response of glacier over high mountain Asia. Then for example, the variability in the local topography, also the presence of de debris cover on the glacier surface. And also uh, the limited field measurement available from the high mountain A Asia. All these difficulties leads to, I mean, uh, more uncertainties in the future prediction. So basically, if we if we want to reduce the uncertainties in the process based un uncertainties the, in in the future prediction, so first thing we need to focus on the under more accurate understanding of the pre present state or the present pro processes that is hap happening on, on on the glacier, and also the glaciologist always trying to overcome these uh, difficulties by improving their models. Uh, that and in, uh, incorporating the physical processes that can explain by by the model and uh, they they are doing more field measurement different kinds of field measurement to constrain their model parameter etc so in in all different different way all uh, all of the glaciologists over the world they are trying to address these kind of issues okay so i think that is it Thank you for your patience. <laughs>